So the first thing you want to do is you are going to start the Adobe Photoshop program. You should be able to find the application uh, in your start menu. So go to start and then in PC you will be able to find uh, this search bar <clears throat> which you can actually search for Adobe Photoshop and then it will link it to the application where you just click on it and then it will launch. This is the layout of Photoshop. On your left, this is your toolbar and these are the various tools that you will be using for your project. And then over here, this is the panels area where you will be able to manipulate layers of uh, images and then also create some paths that will help you to crop up images easily. You can also enter text over here. So if your panel uh, are, not, are not present here, which are some of those that we, we usually use, we are going to usually use for this tutorial, please go to window and then make sure <clears throat> you have paragraph, uh, character, layers and uh, all these other panels are uh, ticked. So the tick means that it is actually present. Okay, So some, some of them are not ticked but uh, they are present here. So you can actually just check over here do you have all these panels uh, ready for you to use these are the few uh, uh, mostly used panels for uh, a tutorial like this <clears throat> so once we have gotten our uh, workspace set up uh, oh this is the menu bar on top sometimes you will use it uh, but not as frequently and then these are all the functions in uh, Photoshop as well so we are going to start by opening our uh, file and you should have your uh, <coughs> folder and then you can choose which character you want to do a, a caricature for so I did an example earlier which is something like this we will be using Photoshop to create such a caricature by using a photo based on the photo so what we are going to do now is once we have our image uh, open up we need to create a new document so go to file new and then uh, make sure you go to preset international paper you want to make it a5 size okay uh, for portrait or landscape <coughs> it's up to the um, the photo itself so for this photo I'm actually using an, a landscape format instead so I'm going to change the values here the width will be 148 a uh, 210 sorry and then height will be 148 instead the resolution I'll keep it as 150 <clears throat> so resolution is usually used for uh, higher uh, quality images so the higher the quality the better it is but since we are doing this as a as a, a digital workshop without printing uh, we don't need to do 300 we just do a 150 pixels uh, resolution would do so we set okay so now <clears throat> what you want to do is you have these two tabs over here these are the open documents in Photoshop what you want to do is you want to grab this image and then drop it over here this new file that you created so you just drag it out the window and then you want to go to this tool called the move tool <clears throat> the shortcut key is V on your keyboard so if you press V on your keyboard it will automatically select that tool for you 
So I have this move tool selected. Right now what I want to do is <clears throat> I want to shift this over to this canvas here, the new uh new document we created just now. So you can actually unlock this layer so that you can move it. So how you unlock is you see this lock icon here, double click and then click OK. So now you can move this image. Okay. So if you want to go back, <clears throat> you can always press Ctrl Alternate Z. Okay, Ctrl Z will only go back one step, but Ctrl Alternate Z will let you go back uh, more than one step. So now I want to move. I make sure my move tool is uh, selected. And then when I move, I'm going to press Shift as well because it will place the image right at the center. And then I check if there's anything cropped off. Okay, and move it up. So what if I don't press uh, Shift to move it? This is what will happen if I don't press Shift. It will move anywhere I drop the document, uh, the image on the new document. Okay, so let's delete that layer. <clears throat> so now we have Joseph schooling here. What we want to do is we want to crop him out. I don't want the blue background behind him. So how do we do that? Let's zoom in. So the shortcut key for zoom is Z. So you, if you're at the move tool, if you want to zoom in, you can key in Z on your keyboard and it will automatically select the zoom tool for you. So once you put your zoom tool onto the canvas, you will see it's a plus sign. So if you want to zoom in, just click on your mouse. But if you want to zoom out, you can press alternate and then it will be minus. Another way to see the whole picture is press Ctrl 0. Go to my pen tool, click or enter P on keyboard and make sure you see on the top menu bar you have combined shapes selected. Okay, so now we are going to start. So how do you use the pen tool is you create a new point at one corner click and release then go to the next point click and drag don't release yet and then you want to follow the curve of that person's silhouette so if this is good release now <clears throat> at here this stage we have two ones over here this one is uh, responsible for the left curve while this one is responsible for the right curve the next line here so <clears throat> if I were to create a new point here now it will follow this one tangent or angle to create this new uh, point so I'm going back control Z or <clears throat> control alternate Z can make you go back a lot of more steps so how do I remove this one because whatever I do it doesn't it does it's not a perfect curve is if you see clearly it does it is not a perfect curve there is a s curve instead so what I want to do is I want to call out my convert point tool which is from the pen tool so if you press for three seconds on the pen tool drop down menu you'll see this one convert point two okay now the shortcut key to call out this tool is press alternate or option on your keyboard and you will see this triangle near the pen icon so click on it when you see this icon and then the one will automatically disappear and you will be able to create a new point that is uh, free of that <coughs> tangent okay so now I have this one over here which will also disrupt my next point when I 
plot it. So what you want to do is you want to call out the convert point tool by pressing on alternate or option. Click again on the last point you created, then create the new point. Okay. So now I want to go back because I think I missed out one point here. Okay. <clears throat> so now this this angle I think it doesn't affect me. So I'm going to not do the convert point two. Now I think this will affect me, so I'm going to double click it again. Make sure it's the this triangle sign that you see, not other signs. <clears throat> so there are some other signs when you move over here to see. This is a plus sign, and then when you go over it again, you may actually minus of this extra point. Okay. <clears throat> so now, uh, with the help of the hand tool space bar. I can move around the document easily. So I press space bar and don't release. Click and drag my mouse and then release both space bar and the mouse and it will stop wherever I uh, <coughs> go. So now I'm going to quicken up the process. So click and drag, release, click again, option click again, click and drag, click, click, click and drag, click and drag, option click or alternate, click and drag. Alternate click. So some points that are straight, they do not have the tangent curves appearing. Only when you are doing a curve. Okay, so now I don't want this point. I can actually press, make sure that this point is grey in colour. This one is transparent. So press delete or backspace to remove it so i'll start again option click click and drag option click or alternate click click and drag okay so now i reach the <coughs> top of the head which is the hair so now i want to zoom out what i can do is i don't want to uh, move out from my uh, pen tool I don't want to suddenly lose track so what I do is I press Control minus on my keyboard and then it will actually <coughs> zoom out for me then I use my space bar and then my mouse to click and drag and don't release both so that I can see the whole hair area if I want to zoom out some more, control minus. Okay, so now I want to just crop out the hair roughly because there's too many fine strands. We are later using an <coughs> easier method to refine the edges of the hair to uh, quickly crop out but also retain. Uh, the details okay so now I'm just uh, plotting back the points on the other side of the uh, silhouette <clears throat> so I want to zoom in so control plus now hand tool call out your hand tool by pressing space bar don't release and then click and drag on your mouse okay so now uh, alternate or option click on the last point you plotted and then click and drag okay same thing 
option or alternate click click and drag Okay, so now I left at the last point because this is where I'm going to crop it out. So, uh, move back all the way to the original point. So press spacebar hand tool and then click and drag your mouse without releasing the spacebar. So, once you release the spacebar, you will see that your pen tool, when you hover over the original point, there is this circle icon beside your pen icon. Only when you see this uh, means that you are able to close the outline. Okay, so when you see this, you can go ahead to close this path. So with your keyboard shift key uh, press down click on this point when you see the circle icon to close the path why do we press down the shift is because it will create a straight line from the last point you uh, plotted which is over here the other corner of the arm here so from there to here is a straight line okay so on your path panel path panel you will see your work path being created now double click it and save the path as body okay so now we have a perfect path for cropping up Joseph schooling so what you want to do is you click on this path body go back to pen tool P and then make sure on the menu bar you see this make selection click on that feather radius enter 0.5 okay anti aliased new selection okay and now go back to your layers panel what you want to do is uh, you have already selected a, a selection okay this is the uh, it's like a dotted line where you will be going to cut away the background okay so you want to remain the person so how do you do that is you click on this icon here at the bottom of the layers panel called add layer mask click on that and it will automatically remove away the background from the person okay in the photo now <clears throat> The 0 0.5 feather radius means that it creates a little bit of feathering effect so that there's some blurred edges so it doesn't look too edgy and too thick. Okay, so it actually blurs it out a little bit. So what you will notice is that on this area, if you zoom in, you have missed out this uh, gap. Okay, so what you want to do is make sure you are on your layers panel and make sure there is a white border around your layer mask the black and white layer mask here instead of the original photo okay so what you want to do now is you call out this tool called the brush tool you can press b on your keyboard okay now your brush tool presets are over here on top of the menu bar you can actually reduce the size here and then increase the hardness here so I'm going to increase the hardness to 90% okay and my size I'm going to make it smaller depending and make sure your your foreground color is black if your foreground color is white you switch it over here it reveals back whatever you have hidden just now also including the background which we hidden with the mask already all right <clears throat> so Make sure it's black 
and then what you are going to do next is make sure you are on this layer mask thumbnail on, and then your brush tool is here you just want to click and drag and then sort of like erase away actually it's hiding away because you're masking it with your brush tool this is another method to crop up objects but uh, it's more it's less accurate than the pen tool and then uh, also quite tedious there is a faster way to remove the background but uh, the results will not be accurate unless the object or subject is a um, is an artificial object which have rough ed um, sharp edges and all this <clears throat> so especially with humans with hair it is not an ideal way it is you you might know this um, it is using a magic wand tool or the lasso tool so we are not covering it this in this lesson today <clears throat> okay so I have hidden this gap here already now what I want to do is remove the background near the hair area right okay so I zoom in with my zoom tool all right and you see this blue background we are going to remove it later on so what we want to do now is uh, click right click on your layer one and then <clears throat> apply layer mask okay now at this point in time you want to create a snapshot over here in your history panel so that you can always go back in time in case you created any errors so now I have my um, layer here selected I want to uh, rename him as uh, body because what we'll do next is we will crop up the head once we clean up the hair area <coughs> So now we are going to do um, <clears throat> a little bit of uh, challenging work. Just follow me. Um, we are going over to our channels panel over here beside the layers. Okay, what we are going to do now is we are going to find a channel that has the highest contrast between the this background and the person all right <clears throat> so when you switch off your rgb channel uh, you need to switch off it can't be switched off you need to switch off the red one first okay and then the green one also but you can't switch off all at once one will be always visible okay so if I want to switch off the blue one to see the green one, I need to switch on the green one first and then switch on blue. <clears throat> so I want to see out which one has the highest contrast or actually which one has the this area closest to white. So actually it seems like blue is the one. So <clears throat> make sure you only select blue layer. You want to duplicate this layer so you can click and drag to this create new layer icon here and it will create a blue copy over here okay <clears throat> so what you want to do now next is you want to go to this tool here called the dodge tool if it's not present just click for three seconds and then release your mouse select the dodge tool over here and then zoom in to the hair area make sure you are on the blue copy channel <clears throat> select the dodge tool and then make sure your presets is okay now 
what we are going to do is we are going to whiten this area out so click and drag click and drag until this area is completely white so this will take some manual work Okay, so it disappears so dodge I mean in photography terms means that it actually exposes less light to the film the photo film so it appears whiter <coughs> and lighter so now we have dodged the background that we wanted to remove it looks completely white now so go back to your dodge tool and then click and release for 3 seconds and then release and then I want you to select the burn tool now what we are going to do next is we are going to <coughs> increase the size of the brush or the burn tool so how do you increase the brush size is you can actually use the brackets the close brackets or the uh, uh, not close bracket the square bracket <coughs> okay and the left square bracket will actually make it smaller in size and then the right square bracket actually makes it bigger in size okay so what you want to do now next is burn the hair make it as dark as possible and you can increase the exposure here so it will be darker but not too much so what it does is we are going to make a selection later on uh, you will see so this is actually the best way to crop up hair in photoshop uh, as it will pick up really minute strands of hair Okay, so I think we have burnt enough of the hair. So what we are going to do next is we will toggle back to our layers panel. Over here, you will want to <coughs> click on this uh, thumbnail, the body layer. Okay, and then you want to press control and then you will see this dotted line square underneath the hand icon you will be able to select and make a selection over here now if you zoom out and see Joseph schooling is being selected <laughs> okay so what we want to do now is we go back to the channels panel at, at the blue copy make sure it's the one that's selected you will be going to use your brush tool okay and then make sure black is the foreground color <clears throat> you can increase the size by pressing the right square bracket button on your keyboard and then zoom out a little bit and start to paint over it so when you reach the hair just be a little bit careful and reduce the size of the brush and then zoom in for more details instead use your hand tool spacebar click and drag your mouse and release both so i'm going to use my brush and then make it smaller in size the left square bracket and then i'm going to paint over but not so much and maybe make the hardness softer to zero percent So what this does is it will create a black silhouette which will crop up the fine strands of hair later on okay so i think it's enough control zero to see the whole silhouette now what you want 
you want to deselect what you selected just now okay so you go to select deselect command D or control D okay and then on your blue copy you want to do the selection again now on your blue copy so make sure you're on the blue copy and then uh, press control click on the icon and it will select the whole selection the black silhouette that you created earlier but if you notice the out outer corners are also uh, with a dotted line we don't want that we just want this one if it's the outer corners it's the white negative shape that's being selected so we want a positive black negative shape to be selected instead so what you do is you go to select and then inverse so there you have it your black silhouette selected now what you want to do is you delete away the blue copy and then it will automatically on the RGB <coughs> channels back now toggle back to your layers panel okay so at here you will create a mask now with your layer mask on your body layer so click on that and it will automatically hide away all the blue background so some of them is still blue so what we want to do is we are going to do a rough selection with the lasso tool okay then we are going to create this selection just a rough selection because some of it is still black uh, not black blue so oops. what we want to do is we are going to select the hair at the outer corners and then go to select modify feather maybe maybe five pixels and then go to image adjustment Oops. okay you will need to uh, apply this layer mask effect first so you apply okay now go to image adjustments click on black and white and then click OK. So right now you don't have any more black um you don't have any more blue background behind him, okay? <clears throat> and then it's all black and white. So zoom out and you will have your perfect image being cropped up. So that is another snapshot that you can take. So you can always go back in time. Alright, so now what we want to do is we are going to crop up the face. <clears throat> so the face is where you will need to um, maybe increase its, its proportion so it looks comical and so therefore you need to crop up his face. Um, so what you can do is you create another path. enter P make sure your shape uh, is combined shapes okay then zoom in so we have already cropped up the head area so what we can do is we just do a rough selection Just maybe here, I don't want to see the collar. I want the flash only. So click and drag, release, alternate or option click. Click and drag, release, alternate option click. Click and drag, release. 
turn on option click and then see the circle close the path so now I have my head selected I'm going to go and press control on my keyboard and then with the uh, dotted line square icon present I'm going to control click and then it will select this head for me now what I want to do is I want to duplicate this only this portion so what I will hit on the keyboard is control J and then automatically if you hide away the layer over here this eye you close the eye the body layer is hidden now and you can see that I have already selected the head out I have cut it out okay and duplicated it so it is still present on the body layer just that I have duplicated this area here <coughs> so I will name this area uh, layer as head and I'm zooming in now I want to um, transform this head size scale it up so I'm going to enter Control T on my keyboard so you have the scale box present now on your area here make sure you are in the center point so if you're on this side you you will actually uh, scale up from this side instead okay or which is the top left corner so if I enter the value like 200% it's going to scale from this this point instead of the middle point okay so I go back to the middle point 100% oops okay no let's uh, cancel the transform okay let's do Control T again now I'm going to <clears throat> I pressed escape to come out of the changes now if I want to uh, drag it up manually so I press Control T what you can do is you press shift to click and drag on one corner of the uh, sorry of the uh, head layer uh, not the center point as you can see if I click from all the four corners it doesn't affect but if I click on this area it affects just the height okay so why do we why do we uh, um, <clears throat> emphasize on shift button because if I don't press shift it scales uh, disproportionately okay so I press ctrl T again and then I scale up from one corner of the photo press shift and then I press down option or alternate also so that I can have a good view see 150 was it 150 looks like that okay because it seems a bit too big okay 150 I will decide on that so I'm going to maintain aspect ratio over here 150 okay and then I click on the tick icon here to commit the transform or you can hit enter on your keyboard so now it's 150 50% uh, bigger actually so <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is since I have the head cropped up now and bigger uh, I'm going to create new eyes and facial features for him. So what I'm going to do now next is I'm going to use my lasso tool and make sure I'm on the head layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create manually just a very rough selection 
of Joseph's eye. Now if I want to add in some selection, I press shift and then you see the plus sign that I may have left out. If I want minus, I press option or alternate and then it will minus away, click and drag and then it will minus away areas that I don't want to include. So just a rough selection will do. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go back to the head layer and press Ctrl J on your keyboard. So now we have layer 1 created which is actually the eye, the left eye. And I'm going to name it the left eye. Oops. The left eye. And right now, what I want to do next is I want to increase the size of his eyes. So the same thing, Control T to call out the scale or transform tool. Then I'm going to increase his size uh, by 150%. You can create your own sizes if you don't have to follow mine, <coughs> especially if you're doing another character. So, um, I like this size, so I'm going to commit to these changes here. So, do the same for the right eye later on. Uh, right now, we are going to add in a layer mask on the left eye. So, what we're going to do is um, we are going to lower down the opacity so click on the opacity word here and then just <coughs> click and drag to your left and it will actually make it uh, make the value drop so I want to drop it to 50% or you can just enter here 50% the reason why is you want to place the pupil at the center of the original photo so it doesn't look too weird so I think this is about there okay so I'm going to put the opacity back to 100% so click on the word opacity and then click and drag to the right all the way and click and release so now with your layer mask created the same thing go to the brush tool and then my brush no hardness 0% size I will increase manually with my square bracket the right square bracket and then I'm going to clean away hide the way actually hide the way not the double eyelid but reveal the his eyebrows and nose bridge okay. same thing repeat this whole procedure for the right eye create another layer with the lasso tool You're on the head layer hit ctrl j on your keyboard now you have the right eye duplicated rename it as right eye and you are going to increase the size by the same proportion 150% maintain aspect ratio click enter or the tick and then add on a layer mask select brush tool brush away any harsh edges and then review the uh, eyebrows and you also want to check whether the opacity yeah the pupil is in the middle center of the original photo so shift it around back up at 100% for opacity and then I might want to move it to the left some more or oh, to the right sorry okay and then review some more here Okay, so I think this is about there. So he has ET eyes now. 
uh, what we want to do next is we want to increase his mouth size I don't want to exaggerate his nose just want to exaggerate his uh, big eyes and uh, big green so I'm going back to the lasso tool selecting some more so add shift to your mouse click don't release on the dimple selected as well okay so zoom out make sure you're on the head layer press ctrl j on your keyboard and then rename this layer as mouth press ctrl t on your keyboard to transform it you can manually transform it but i think my percentage is 130 and then I hit enter <clears throat> next uh, add the layer mask go to the brush tool and then brush away to hide any unwanted edges okay there you have it I think it's a little bit saying it so I want to press ctrl T on the keyboard and then I'm just going to okay when you see this uh, two arrow headed uh, curve arrow it's the same as PowerPoint presentation so just uh, rotate it wherever you think it needs rotation so I think somewhere around here do hit enter okay <clears throat> and then I want to move the mouth a little bit more to the right just a little bit with the right key on your keyboard so I think this is it now what I want to do next is I want to merge all these layers together in one head so with the left eye layer the top layer selected scroll down your layers panel and then press shift to click on head so when you scroll up those highlighted in blue are selected so <clears throat> what you want to do is you right click on your mouse and then click on merge layers and it will merge down as your head rename it as head okay so now you have the ET head. So there's some um, unwanted edges here. You can use your eraser tool to brush away and we erase it away. This as well. You can just press space bar and then move around, click and drag. And the blue tinge here, I don't want it. Blue tinge here as well. Okay, so <clears throat> what I want to do now is I want to hide away add a layer mask and hide away the neck here so select a brush tool black on the foreground layer color and then not so soft maybe 65 percent brush away and reveal the neck underneath Select your move tool, move your move your head layer somewhere maybe here. So 
I'm going to increase the hardness to 90% so I can go in further with the refinements oops sorry I think I'm on the wrong So go back to this layer here, head, layer mask, brush tool, make sure black is the foreground color and then set your brush to 90% hardness and then brush away. This is about it. <coughs> okay, there is a deep Okay, I'm going to increase the hardness here. Okay, so I think this is about it. Now, <coughs> zoom out on alternate Z. Okay. Now, uh, what I want to do now is I'm going to remove this layer mask and apply it. So you can also right click and apply layer mask. Then we are going to add in a fun effect for your <coughs> facial features now. This is where the fun begins. So create a snapshot now. So you can always go back in time if you need to. Alright. So now what you want to do is you want to go to filter, make sure your head layer is selected, go to liquify dot dot dot. So here is where your fun begins. You can click on the zoom tool to zoom in or zoom out. It's alternate zoom tool. Okay. <clears throat> so here is the forward walk tool. You may use this tool to increase the brush size. It's increased by 10. Uh, actually, 10. 25 okay so I think this tool is actually best for uh, allocating things okay and then such as uh, if you want to elongate the jawline the square jawline if you want to elongate it so 150% brush size brush pressure 51 okay and then pucker tool is where you can small like shrink things down the brush size is 125 so it can make your forehead very tiny or your lips very tiny smaller nose okay and then you can also use the bloat tool to increase the cuteness factor okay so I'm going back to use the pucker tool to oops 
shrink down the size of his teeth. Ah. And then <coughs> the bloat too, you can also bloat up the cheeks. So 100 brush size. His cheeks, so it's like a very cute apple cheeks. And boot up his chin as well. And then I'm going to use the forward. What two smaller brush size 45? I'm going to shift back his eyes a little bit and also perhaps shrink down his pupils. Brush size 40. Okay, and then use the forward what two, warp up his wrinkles a little bit more. Okay. And then warp up uh, bigger brush size, 70 or 80. 80. And then warp up his cherry smile. Okay. And maybe make his head a little bit smaller by the sides and also make his ears like elf ears so increase and decrease the brush size like you did earlier so square bracket go in to use the forward tool and then exaggerate his eye bags all the training that he did bring it down brush size 40 really droopy eye bags so just click and drag and release okay so I think yes and then we are going to use the the look to bloat out his cheeks this dimples here let's shrink down this area first this area looked up the cheeks again and then it's the forward work tool and make line more squarish and chubby okay so I think I'm pretty happy with the results I press ok and there it is our swimming champion okay so now that we have his uh, caricature done half uh, we will need to add in shadow underneath this 
image here so what we are going to do next is we are going to go to this icon here beside the add layer mask icon okay you are going to add a layer style called drop shadow click on that <clears throat> and then your angle is where your light shines and then the shadow falls okay the distance is how much there is the spread is how big it's spreading out towards and then the size is how feathery it looks like okay so let me see the angle is supposed to be here you can see over here i want it to be something like this spread maybe not so much size maybe like that and then i'm going to press ok right so <clears throat> what you're going to do next is you're going to click on the fx icon on the head layer and then you are going to go to this i uh this option called create layer just click ok and there you have your head drop shadow layer separate from the head now and if you see your blending mode is multiply over here okay so what you want to do now is you want to add on a layer mask on this layer this head shadow and then click on your brush tool increase the brush size by pressing down the closed bracket <coughs> or square bracket and then oops, make sure you're on the layer mask and black is the foreground color what you want to do now is you want to brush away hardness zero brush away the shadows that are not uh, possible which means it's on empty space you just want shadows underneath the neck area so right now i think there's too much being brushed off so i'm going to increase switch to white increase the on the shadows on the shoulders So the head area here, I think this, I will use the eraser to wipe away this area because it's too feathery, there should be a sharp edge. Okay. <clears throat> so eraser is here, you can just press E or on the keyboard or just select this tool. Okay. So now I have this head layer selected. I'm still not satisfied. I'm taking the eraser tool again, shaping the jawline so that it's smooth. Okay, so I think this is fine. Now, uh, what you want to do next is you want to actually <coughs> create a, a very um, um, comical effect now. Uh, further the comical effect by shrinking down some body parts and then squeezing up the shoulders so make sure you're on the body layer go to filter liquify dot 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 make sure you're not on this option because if you select this option it will repeat what you did to the face on your body so liquify dot 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 so here we have his picture and we are going to use the Parker tool to shrink down his hands so we make it look more comical and the forward walk tool 
brush size increase. You can also shrink down the shoulders and then give him arching shoulders also. Shoulder pads. Can also bloat up the zoom in to the metal. Press space bar, hand tool to move around. Can also bloat up the Olympic medal logo if you want to. And then you may also bloat up his uh, logo on the uniform. So it looks comical. So increase the size of the brush to 150%. Okay. Alright, so I think this is about it. Let's increase the size to 300. Shift the whole hand down. Okay, so I think this is about that. Okay. Yes, we have his body now. <clears throat> what we're going to do next is um, combine all the layers here and merge them together. So, click on the body layer, scroll up, click shift on your keyboard and then select the head layer so that all three layers are selected go to the right click option go to merge layers and I'm going to rename this layer as Joseph okay <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, um, a high pass chair um, filter so I'm, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to first copy it, duplicate this layer so press ctrl J to duplicate Joseph copy so I'm going to go to filter next and then I'm going to other <coughs> select high pass uh, you can maneuver however what you want but I'm going to choose five okay so something like this like a iron cast will do okay so right now I'm going to um, add on a curve and I'm, I'm going to go to the blending mode and change it to linear light instead and then I'm going to go to this icon here called create new fill or adjustment layer click on that and then select curves okay so on this layer you will create a high contrast photo okay so it can be an s curve like this or maybe just a c curve so i can just adjust a little bit more somewhere here okay i'm going to click on close the properties window okay so i want this effect so now what i'm going to do next is i'm going to use the smudge tool so the smudge tool basically smudges things and then it makes it blur so it's over here and above the burn and dodge tool <coughs> so this is the smudge tool it's like the um soft pastel painting so you use your finger to smudge things out so uh go to the layer called joseph okay the original one and then i want you to zoom in now so you can see because this image is not that high resolution uh the image is very grainy after having the high pass filter which creates a high contrast now what you can do 
with the smudge tool is exactly how we are going to <coughs> create a smooth painted painterly like effect so create this painterly effect by clicking on the smudge tool on your toolbar left side go to the brush presets on your menu bar select a brush that looks similar to this brush here 27 now if you don't have this brush don't worry just look through your brush uh, library and select something that is close to this kind of uh, <clears throat> texture okay so I have gotten it selected I want something like 50 uh, brush size for this so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure I'm on Joseph layer and then my strength I'm going to set it as 50% click on shift and select the layers to merge them right click for the merge option now so now you can have your smudge effect Created. You can create painterly like effects with this uh, smudge tool. So just drag it around, and it's like the you can decrease the size of the brush for details, detail work. So it's like a flat brush. So you can increase whenever you need to for the For bigger objects okay so try not to smudge too much at once just a little little bit goes a long way follow the direction of the marks and the contour lines of the image streamer has a double chin maybe I will remove that later okay. <coughs> I'm decre now I'm decreasing the strength because I think it's a little bit too much Increase the size of the brush whenever you need to. Olympic champion have double chin. <laughs> so okay, now I think. Oops, 
I think this is getting there. I just need to smoothen out any areas that are jagged and not looking that well blended. So here is where you actually blend the pixels together. you can always maneuver the size of the brush much tool increase so close bracket left uh, right bracket square bracket and then you can actually smudge out the hair and it's very fun to do this because this brush actually works pretty well for the hair effect so just blend things out okay so now we have a nicely blended hair you can always retweak it We are going to move on to his body. Select your smudge tool again. So the good thing is uh, this photo, sometimes they have this uh, pixelation and it has some green spots of green pixels, or red pixels and it adds interest to the digital painting so you can actually you make use of these colors in your painting and smudge them out and it looks very interesting so now you can smudge out the red jacket So the metal, if you want to, you can also do that. But very tiny amount because it might <coughs> make it too smudgy.
so there's no right or wrong actually just uh, uh, try to go um, and experiment because there is always uh, a way to go back in time with a digital artwork unlike a traditional artwork you can always undo or control alternate Z and go back so that is the beauty of uh, digital artworks okay so now we have sort of finished our digital painting it's almost done I'm just looking around zooming in and out to see if there's any areas that I can trim so I think underneath the nose yes there's a lot of areas that I can clean up and then I think that's important so right now what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, create <coughs> a highlight layer on this painting let's go over to our layer here let's rename it as Joseph again and then we are going to <coughs> create a new layer uh, fill it all completely with white so press alternate delete on your keyboard okay make sure it is on the foreground color if it's on the background you can just press control delete control delete oops let's do it again control delete if it's on the background okay now <coughs> Uh, what you want to do now next is rename this layer as highlights and then select the blending mode as overlay so that there's a lot of light areas create a layer mask uh, create a layer mask with the Joseph layer okay so command uh, sorry control and then on the Joseph layer click on it so it's selected and then create a layer mask on the highlights layer so now go to the brush tool increase the size closed uh, bracket the square bracket make sure black is selected and then you can erase away areas that are not hit by lights Maybe the palm inside palm is not. It should be the darkest in this area. No, uh, this area darker. Then the I think the forehead is the lightest. The hair as well. Some more here. Oops. So here it's not that much of a difference. Chin, yes. Under the nose, mm. 
Temples Bridge Temples And then let's see. Close the layer visibility. Is it too bright? Yes. I think the eye back should be darker. So I think it is pretty much done. Okay, so I think I'm done. So now if you want to add in a background, uh, you may go to this lock icon here, double click it, and then uh, click OK to release this layer. So you can delete it or you can actually create a go to fx and create a gradient overlay so i'm going to just go and create this gradient click on this and then go to the presets i'm going to change this color double click on it to a dark maroon like that and then click ok and i'm going to set this style as radar which means the light color to the dark area from the center so now I have a little bit of a problem because I have a bit of a white outline here. So what you can do is you're going to go to the highlights layer and then you're going to <coughs> go to the brush, make sure it's black that you're selecting and then rub away, rub away this area. And over here, we are going to also rub away. So go to the layer mask, add a layer mask, and then just go to, uh, not so fine, 83% maybe. Oops. And maybe 50%. Sense okay, and then just uh, rub away, hide away. Oops, hide away any white edges. Okay, and or you can also select a rough selection with your lasso tool the hair area and then you are going to to select feather a modify feather five pixels okay make sure you're on this layer thumbnail Joseph okay go to image adjustments uh, go to uh, command J and then image make sure you're on layer one adjustment go to uh, invert brush and then wipe away these areas that are white Okay, and review again. Do you see the white? <coughs> so now, 
can do is you can do a uh, subtract. Yes, and then it will become all black. Uh, with my black, uh, red background, and I also can add in logos. So I have this downloaded here. This image. And I'm going to just drag it in. Make sure it's on the top layer of the highlights. The Team Singapore logo. Maybe smaller. And then I'm going to use the magic wand tool. It's great for selecting colors of the same uh, hue. Then you just press delete and then it will delete the whole uh, red background. And then I'm going to add in his name. So I'm going to go to type tool, T on the menu bar. <coughs> Joseph Squirrel, our hero. You can actually save it as well as a Photoshop document. Okay? Please remember to save that. Okay, thank you for listening to the tutorial. I hope you enjoy it very much. Thank you and have a good evening.